What's up and welcome back to another kind of funny games trailer reaction. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes and I'm joined by the sad boy himself, Barrett Courtney, looking fantastic in that denim jacket. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Tim, this this last weekend was just it was a weekend of dreams, honestly, in the in the Star Wars universe. We got so many things to talk about. Of course, today we're talking about specifically the video game side of uh, Star Wars stuff that we got over the weekend. But, you know, we got, like, leaked uh, Ahsoka stuff. We got, you know, leaked Mando stuff because they didn't uh, stream those uh, things uh, for the internet as a whole. So I got to look at a bunch of cool little images taken by fans over the weekend. And, man, I'm just, I'm so excited for what is about to be a banger year of Star Wars for the next, like, year and a half at this point. Oh, it's it, it's yeah. insane. Dude, it's the it's the takeover, man. Like you didn't even mention Tales of the Jedi, Bad Batch season two, oh. so much stuff. Like things, it's starting to it's starting to add up, starting to line up in a way that I haven't seen from Disney in in quite a while on the Star Wars side. So that's all really exciting. Uh, normally, we don't do trailer reactions on the video game side unless there's like the big breakout standouts. Last time we did one, I think, was Breath of the Wild two yep. uh, during E three season last year. But you know. I'm smelling summer game fest season in the air right now. And so that's why we're like, let's let's give a, a look to this one. We've both already seen the trailer, so this isn't our first reaction, but we're gonna watch it one time through. It's only a minute to kind of talk over it. And then we're gonna break down if you have any thoughts and theories as the Star Wars dude. All right. Let's go. Yeah, let's get into it. I'm also just so happy it's happening. I know. Like, we kind of knew. Me. Yeah, it was, like, Tell gonna happen me. for sure, yeah. but I'm excited about 2023. Why need I imagine it'll be first half. When they won't follow. Why? Who's taking a little batch I'm... there? Whoa, the way that sunk up with, like, the music, too. Hot. What is your next move? Looks so good. Jedi. I love that Cal already feels like part of the Star Wars lore. Yeah. To the point where so many people want him in so many things. It's awesome. Who is this man? Is that Sephiroth? Is it Raiden? Skinny Santa Claus? I know some people aren't in love with the name. They're wrong. <laughs> I didn't I love, love the name at first. Like around the time that like Jeff Grubb had kind of confirmed what the name was, I wasn't in love with it. But it's definitely grown on me. And like now watching this trailer, I'm like, yeah, I'm into it because I know that like it's really gonna um, fall into like whatever themes that they uh, tackle in the in this game specifically, whatever story that they have to tell, uh, character arcs and stuff like that. Because Fallen Order was definitely like a, a reflection of. Uh, Cal and Seer's uh, kind of mission to try to start a new Jedi Order, right? So uh, I imagine, like, Survivor, I think, as a as a name is going to be something that I uh, uh, grow uh, to uh, love uh, over the years and stuff, especially when we get our hands on this game next year. Yeah. I mean, my favorite thing about this trailer, I know everyone's all up in arms about who is the guy without an arm in the back to tank, but for me, it is the shots of seeing Cal fight the dude who's probably the same guy. Maybe. I don't know. But the idea that he gets his lightsaber stolen, like we were wondering I going know. into this, like, how are they going to Metroid it? Like, how are they going to like debuff Cal after how powerful he got by the end of the first game and it's like well that's an interesting way to like Samus loses her armor you know yeah, like what yeah. how do they how do they have that for this one so I, I'm intrigued by that uh, let, let me ask you a, a big top level question All right. do you think that's the Grand Inquisitor or is it just someone from that no species? so uh, what I've been seeing and I, I said this like very briefly on Xcast uh, talking about this being the Grand Inquisitor and uh, uh, comments came through and they're like, hey, uh, it seems like on official sites they're confirming that's not him. And that was like kind of my suspicion, especially because like, you know, like he's got a, a couple like uh, double double chin going on there and he's he looks like a definitely like a bigger dude than the Grand Inquisitor. Like, yeah, they're the same, obviously the same like uh, alien race, but uh, definitely di different people. I think what they're saying is that this is a senator. 
uh, right here, which is very interesting of like, why is this random senator like really interested in Cal specifically, which I don't really have an in answer to, but like I'm really interested to see like where that goes. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that'll be interesting. And, and I think it was just like weird timing, right? Because we just got Kenobi, the Grand Inquisitor kind of made his live action debut in that. Then with this trailer coming out in the same week with someone who looks like the Grand Inquisitor, I think there was like a uh, assumption even on my part of like, oh, that's got to be him, right? Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem to actually be the same guy. Yeah. So then going forward, what's your, your big takeaway from this? Like, what is the thing you're most excited for so to Tim, talk about? Tim, I think we need to just talk about the elephant in the room. People in the comments, I'm about to be back on my bullshit. The same level of bullshit that I was on a year ago, theorizing about hydrated Ganon in the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer uh, from, from last year, uh, which feels like forever ago at this point. And it's on the same level of bullshit where I understand this theory that I have that is coming together in my head is probably not correct. But this is, you know, like I'm just kind of seeing puzzle pieces align. Do all of the pieces fit together? Who knows? Only time will tell. But let's break it down for you, Tim. Of course, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, they, they talked about in the, like, the press uh, briefing or whatever. This is five years after the events of Fallen Order. Um, so Cal and his team have definitely gone on a journey, right? We get the this senator kind of uh, doing, like, uh, the voiceover throughout it, talking about, like, uh, how can you lead if no one wants to follow you? We see the mantis kind of uh, disheveled here, uh, like, kind of falling apart on this planet. Um, and so it kind of begs the question of, like, has Cal split away from the team? Is he going off to do something that they don't fully agree with? Mm. And is that leading him to whoever uh, this man is taking a, a really nice bath here at the end of this trailer? So um, I have a theory, and it, it's gonna. Uh, there's a couple of different parts that I, I'm gonna pull from here, but to talk about it, I'm, I'm trying to think of where to start off. Um, the best place to start off. And I, I think it's... Craft me a tale. Barrett. I'm going to craft you a tale of Star Wars Jedi Survivor and what I think it's going to be about, right? After the events of Fallen Order where Cal decides, no, he doesn't want uh, a new generation of Jedi to possibly go through what he and uh, Seer and, like, other Jedi went through with Order 66, you know, what is, what is his next step? What is his journey? And I could see a headspace where he is at where he maybe wants to learn about the past of the Jedi, to learn about what were the Jedi like at the height of, you know, like uh, them being true to who they are. Where did they become? When did they become misguided? What led them to the fall of the Jedi Order with Order 66 and all that stuff? And what if he hears a rumor about, and it's, again, remember the, the name Survivor, the kind of theme of Survivor, right? What if he hears a rumor of a certain Jedi who maybe on some planet, some way, shape, or form, has survived a very long time. And, you know, Cal might hear this rumor, hear the story, and become obsessed with, like, learning of finding this Jedi and learning uh, from this Jedi who might be from a time way before the, the times of Order 66 to learn from him of, like, why, why did the Jedi fall, right? Where did we go wrong? Um... And so he comes. He becomes obsessed with looking for this uh, this uh, ancient Jedi. Maybe that uh, you know grinds some gears between him and his team. Maybe they're like, you're, you're becoming too obsessed with this this tall tale. Like there's no way it's true. Um, and then you know maybe he lands onto this planet uh, by himself with the Mantis, and it comes upon this uh, back to tank here uh, with this uh, man right here. But what if the rumor isn't fully correct, right? He's hearing tales of an ancient Jedi who has been able to survive a very long time. And he, you know, resurrects this Jedi who's been able to survive in this uh, weird back to tank um, and, you know, learns a little bit from him, is aligned with him for a little bit. And then we kind of learned that maybe this Jedi isn't who, you know, uh, Cal thought they were. And they end up, you know, being a, pulled a little bit to the dark side. Uh, you know, this might sound a little familiar. And again, bear with me here, because I know the weight that this is going to... I know the weight that the statement is about to bring. Oh, let's what go. What if we're bringing Revan back into the main canon, crossing storylines with our boy, Cal Kestis? Now, of course, this guy doesn't 
completely look like Revan because I think there's a canon version of what Revan looks like, um, you know, all of this stuff. And I so I know that it's kind of like crazy talk of where I'm coming from here. But especially with the uh, Knights of the Old Republic remake uh, coming out in the next couple of years, I forget if they confirmed like a 2023 thing on that or, or whatnot. And there's rumors of them bringing elements of both one and two into that remake. Of course, this is them trying to, you know, they're, we're going under the assumption that all new Star Wars stuff are canon. Maybe they're trying to rework things to make it fit into the canon that, you know, all the kind of head Star Wars people want to fit into the story that they're telling. You know, what if they decide to add a new element where Revan is, you know, in this weird back to tank for a very long time since the times of the old Republic and is able to survive and essentially like reawaken in the time of the empire and something that they could play around with uh, there. And of course, you know, what if this is Revan and, you know, Cal and him kind of like meet, they talk a little bit and then slowly but surely Revan kind of gets pulled to the dark side uh, as he as he does, especially learning about the time of the Empire, learning that the Jedi fell, that the, you know, the Sith have truly taken over the galaxy this time, um, you know, and, you know, we see him kind of fall back because this 100 percent, even if it is Revan or if it isn't the person in this tank who only has one arm. Uh, they only have their one left arm. This was, this is a hundred percent this same person right here, who's only bringing up uh, their lightsaber with their left hand. It doesn't like they're You're not really seeing the the right arm and stuff like that. Um, so. There's other shots too, like of him in the tank. I think it's earlier where it's like it's so clear that he only has one arm. Yeah, like yeah, the, this that above one. Shot like they're right they're here. bringing attention to that. Yeah. Yes, and so. I, I know it's insane. I know it's crazy to think about, you know, them trying to, like, essentially have Revan time travel from his day and age over to, to here. Um, and it, that's why I'm personally not even fully convinced of it. But I could see it, especially, of just, like, the idea of a, a Jedi surviving this long mm. to this uh, day and age and learning how to survive yeah. in this new day and age. And I think that's going to be a really cool reflection of where Cal is at in his journey, in his character character arc um and i you know i think it's gonna lead cal down a uh interesting kind of point in his life where he split from his team possibly and all of this stuff and again whoever this uh sith lord we're assuming is it, whether it is actually you know my crazy theory of being revenant or not you know we see you know him uh smack the the lightsaber out out of cal's hand uh which then we see you know, is being delivered uh, by the stormtroopers to this uh, senator um, in this shot here where he looks over Cal's lightsaber. I wonder if this Sith, like, knowing that the Sith have fully taken over, he's like, oh, maybe I can send this as a peace, a peace offering uh, to kind of, like, uh, hang out with the Empire for a little bit and so I can kind of find my place in the Empire until, you know, I try to betray the Emperor in some way, shape, or form. So that's my crazy level theory where I like there was a moment on Friday where I was like wait what if this is all coming together especially with the Knights of the uh, Knights of the Old Republic totally coming out and them maybe redoing story elements and like all of this stuff and you yeah. know we know that Filoni has played with the idea of bringing Revan back into the current canon and all this stuff like things are starting to align maybe in places where they aren't truly aligning in my head at least of especially with maybe them not fully bringing the um Star Wars video game characters over into like uh, the live action stuff because I know people want Cal over in like Kenobi and stuff like that. I don't really think that's ever going to happen. But what if they're looking at it of like, hey, we've got a, such a big universe in just the video games. Wouldn't it be cool if we can ha start having those crossovers in those video games and have these characters meet and interact and stuff like that? So that's where I'm at. Even if it isn't uh, Revan, I do think the rest of that theory I think is pretty solid of a a rumored uh, ancient Jedi who has survived a very long time who turns out to be a Sith Lord uh, that Cal has to now deal with. And that is going to be his like main main foe in this next game. Yeah, man, I, I think that that. It's a great theory, and I think that it adds up, uh, especially when you add the Knights of the Old Republic remake happening. And the little we know about that, I feel like there's a, a lot of things that, although we don't know, we can assume that there's a chance that they will make that canon. That they will be like, yeah, no, there is a story in the remake that is canon to the lore of the, the Disney Star Wars um, experience. So that all adds up to me. I do think we're going to see Cal in live action at some point. I don't think it's going to be in Kenobi. Um, but I do think that those timelines kind of adding up is 
very telling, especially when earlier in this episode, we talked a little bit about like the other shows that they announced. They're really dealing with specific time periods and kind of building out narratives that kind of enhance each other around yeah. certain they're, events. They're filling in gaps, especially between the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy, which is stuff that like we as fans have wanted for the longest time in like the current like uh, canon and stuff like that, especially. Yeah, and like obviously with the amount of focus on the Mando era stuff of like post Jedi, like kind of the being the seeds that will eventually turn into the thirty years later we see in the the sequels. Like you know we've talked a lot on uh, Boba Book of Boba Fett and our different shows that we've done, Bad Batch even um, about the idea of where is all of this going to kind of fit on the timeline and with this show or with this in particular, in the same way that Clone Wars and Rebels kind of like fleshed out clone Wars specifically the prequels and tried to like make sense of the bad things of the movies like we're gonna start getting that from the sequels we've already kind of been teased at a little bit of that like really kind of explaining how did palpatine come back and i wonder how early they're really gonna start that narrative thread because i think that they've given us enough hints and teases in different projects that after the clone wars there was another cloning situation and we clearly see that in episode nine right with like the right. snoke cloning process but where does that start are there other experiments that happened is this guy we see in the back to tank some type of clone experiment right um or, or some or something like that i think that's the other theory that i'd be like i think makes sense with the storylines of some of the other projects currently i'm just saying i'm just saying y'all i know i know you're already in the comments being like barry you're a crazy motherfucker and i just it kind of looks like revan's chess piece here i'm just saying not fully but kind of a little bit it kind of looks like his gloves um another aspect that i wanted to bring up of course we see the dismantled uh mantis kind of like breaking down on this planet that we assume cal has, this is the same planet that we're i'm gonna assume that cal finds uh this uh this person in the back uh, back to tank right we see mm. this planet kind of near some weird space anomaly and like that also brings in the question of course you know we got the what's the exegol uh in episode nine right where they get yeah. like through the weird vortex but like i also like ask the question of like are we gonna get into some wild space territory in this game right like uh it's known from the the uh thrawn's backstory him and his people kind of come from wild space like and if you don't know wild space is essentially the the galaxy outside of like the established like empire and galactic republic and stuff like that where it's just like i don't we don't go there that's like uninhabitable yeah. uninhabitable and stuff like that and like uh we know thrawn to come from there and stuff like that so i wonder if like Something like that might be in play here of like maybe this is some someone that's like, you know, uh, not even like from the Galactic Republic kind of a part of space. Right. Which would be interesting and in like how that plays into it um, from the Revan, I think, backstory. I think it was like, you know, he went off to help out um, or at least in the. Uh, his original story, I think, is like he was a Jedi and went to go help out the uh, the war that was happening on Mandalore and then kind of like disappeared for a bit with his Padawan or something. I, f I forget uh, the specific relationships, but eventually like they turned into Sith and uh, mm -hmm. they, they eventually come back into uh, 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 to the Galactic Republic as Sith lords and t try to take it over. Um, and so I wonder, again... I'm trying to put puzzle pieces uh, together here that may not fit, but, like, I wonder if that uh, fits into there as well. And, you know, speaking of Thrawn, right, of, like, wild space and stuff like that, um, you know, we're I, – I, I'm assuming we're seeing this um, senator on um, uh, Coruscant. Coruscant right here too. And, like, I got to imagine that we're also kind of, like, in the era of – I forget, like, in the current canon, like, how early in the Empire Thrawn comes into play and stuff like that. Mm. But I wonder if, like, how much we're going to get more of, like, learning about the established Empire and stuff like that and, like, their yeah. side of the stories. Because that was, like – it was very present in Jedi Fallen Order, but it was rarely that you got to see that side of it in the story that they were telling in that first game. And I wonder how much more they're going to play into that if we do see cameos of – Maybe the Emperor himself, maybe Thrawn, if this is, like, around the time that he's coming into play and stuff like that. Totally, man. I mean, like, looking at what Jedi Fallen Order 1 did, I think that they they succeeded at creating a new core cast member that we love and care about in Star Wars with Cal. But I think even the supporting cast, obviously, with Sierra and with uh, Greasy Money Baby and all that, like, we loved <laughs> them. But the game had a strong group of villains, and then it had Darth Vader. Right? Yeah. It also had that, like, and the cherry on top. I feel like with what this is as a sequel – 
they need to have an iconic villain that is added to the lore in the same way that Cal was added. And I mm-hmm. think that they have the easy layup with, with Revan. People love Revan. All they need to do is find the right way to canonize him and like take the, the good of his previous stories and apply it here with characters and a world that we already know and love. And I think that it adds up and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm very interested in the dynamics of this all. Like if this fight, we see him kind of his lightsaber fall, right? We imagine this might be yeah. where he loses it. And the next time we see it, it's with that grand inquisitor looking dude yeah you know like he's looking down at it and it's like i wonder what the dynamics are between potentially revan or whoever that is and these people right um and you know you're talking about like the metroidvania of it all just to talk about like the the gameplay elements and like what we're what we can theorize here i wonder if this is less of a metroidvania moment at the beginning of the game where you get some of your stuff taken away at the beginning and i wonder if this is more of a moment similar to the first uh game where you get uh captured by uh bounty hunters and there's like that kind of quick level where you have to like go explore and find find bd1 without your lightsaber and stuff like that and then you like quickly get your lightsaber uh back and stuff like that um yeah something that i was thinking about over the weekend like i hope they don't do the whole you know all of the force powers you uh you know you learned throughout the first game for some reason they're gone in in this one like i i think that would kind of go against even just the story that they were telling in the first game because that whole <clears throat> kind of like arc for cal and like his um, reconnection to yeah the his reconnection to the force dealing with ptsd like there's even a moment where you know like the ui pops up of like cal is fully like fully back to where he was when he was a padawan right like that was like part of his character arc there and so i i hope more of this is just like him getting to maybe learn like newer powers and like a you know, growing, continuing to grow his connection with the force in uh, in a certain way. And, you know, it'd be interesting to see if, you know, we have to fight with something else that isn't a lightsaber. Like maybe it is out of play for a little bit to not feel so OP, especially at the end of Jedi Fallen Order, where you get that sick move where you can detach uh, your lightsaber and yeah. it to two. So dope. Um, and so that'll be interesting, especially because like in this trailer, it doesn't really show his lightsaber being like two sided. But I, I wonder if that's just like them kind of choosing it as in, like an aesthetic thing. I don't know if yeah. that really means anything anything truly when yeah. it comes to the gameplay but um yeah I, I i hope there's uh not too much of like a metroidvania kind of like your force powers you can't you don't know how to force push or pull anymore sorry totally <laughs> Yeah, you know, I got to say, this trailer gets me really excited. I think that it kind of did its job, and I think taking out the Revan possibility, I still, I'm I'm excited for who this is, and I feel like it could be a nobody, it could be a new character, it could be someone obscure from the comics that makes somebody that loves the comics really happy. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm on, I, there's nobody I can think of that I'm like, oh, it might be them. And but. Then, like, the less I convince myself of Revan, like, the more I do convince myself because I was talking to totally. other Star Wars nerds over the weekend about it. And, uh, you know, uh, someone I was talking to, they're like, oh, that would be an interesting, like, how they kind of brought back uh, Khan in Star Trek Into Darkness, right? Where it's like, because the way that they cast him, they kind of make him look purposely look different so they can kind of do that like big reveal, which, you know, all Star Trek fans knew of like, that's Khan. You're not fooling it. It's Khan. Like, sorry, like this isn't a mm-hmm. big trick you're pulling out on us. But I wonder if they could pull it off with something uh, like Star Wars and like bring in this character that is technically uh, not canon currently. And especially yeah. with like, I see the way of it playing out where like, you know, even for like new fans who might not understand the history of Revan, they learn a little bit about him if it is him in this game. And then, oh, hey, uh, the game that he's known for being in is getting a remake, uh, you know, either later this year or in the next uh, couple of years. And now that you're kind of interested in him with like his role in this new game, go back and like look at his journey that's now canonized and kind of reworked for the current canon and stuff like that. Like those are the other pieces where I see of like, oh, I could totally see if that's if I'm right. Like I could see that's why they're kind of like breaking it out in these pieces and why they kind of want to like bring back a, a Knights of the Old Republic remake and stuff like that. So again, yeah. I've been called a Madden Madden before, you know, and I've definitely earned that title uh, before, but you know, I'm, I'm willing to bet right now, at least where I'm feeling that our boy is coming back into the canon. I think it adds up. I think it's exciting. And like I said, either way, I'm interested. I can't wait for this 2023. Fingers crossed it's early 2023. It feels right to me, but hey, we'll have to wait and see. I'm sure we'll see some more gameplay or or something uh, at some point during Summer Game Fest. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, But 
Thank you so much, Barrett, for hanging out, talking about Star Wars, all that Thank stuff. Thank you for humoring Until, me. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, that was great. Also, we're going to be doing our weekly Obi-Wan Kenobi breakdowns, uh, youtube.com slash kind of funny. Go check out the screencast. We'll be there for you. But until next time, I love you all. Goodbye.